the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. The Lord is risen, alleluia. Full of joy, we gather here together to celebrate the victory of Christ over sin and over death. During this Holy Eucharist, we remember all the intentions of our benefactors and of those who ask for our prayers. We pray in our own personal intentions. In the beginning, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have great sin in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we, who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection, may through the renew renewal brought by your Spirit rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good in healing all those oppressed by the people, for God was sweet to you. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised for the third day and granted that he be visible, not all the people, but to us. The witnesses chosen by God is in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. They commissioned us to preach to the people, to testify that he is one appointed by God, as judge of the living and the dead, to whom all the prophets bear witness, that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
hindi kami lahat sa iyo po, kaya ito sa mga guys. Kaya ito sa Brothers and sisters, if, if then your ways with Christ, seek what is above. Your Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. In Christ, your life appears. Then you too will appear with Him in glory. The Word of the Word. Thanks be to God. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus laughed and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial clothes there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial clothes there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial clothes, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Dear brothers and sisters, as we gather here on this joyous Easter Sunday, we are reminded of the amazing power and love of our Lord Jesus Christ. This day marks the culmination of the most important event event in the history of humanity, the resurrection of our Lord from the dead. In the Gospel of John, we just heard, we heard about Mary Magdalene's discovery of the empty tomb and the disciples' response to that news. Mary Magdalene who had followed Jesus throughout his ministry, came to the tomb early in the morning and found out that the stone had been rolled away. So she immediately went to tell Peter and John, but they were skeptical of her report, but ran to the tomb to see for themselves. When they arrived, they found the tomb empty 
and the burial clothes that had been wrapped around Jesus' body lying on the ground. The passage is very significant because it is the first eyewitness account of the resurrection of Jesus. It shows that Jesus' resurrection was not a myth or a legend, but a real and historical event that occurred just as the scriptures had foretold. It is also significant because it shows us how the disciples reacted to this event. First we see Mary Magdalene who was the first witness to the resurrection. And this is also very significant because in the first century women were not considered credible witnesses in Jewish society. Yet we can see that Jesus chose to reveal himself to a woman, showing that he valued all people equally, regardless of their gender or social status. Mary Magdalene, her testimony is a reminder to us that God can use anyone, regardless of their background, to proclaim the message of salvation. And second, we see that the disciples were initially skeptical of the news of the empty tomb. Peter and John ran to the tomb to see for themselves, but they did not immediately understand what had happened. And this is a reminder for us that faith does not always come easily. Even those who walk with Jesus for three years and witness his miracles were not immediately convinced of his resurrection. It took time to them to understand the significance of what had happened. And finally, we see that the empty tomb and the burial clothes left behind were a sign of Jesus' resurrection. The tomb was not just empty, but the burial clothes that had been wrapped around Jesus' body were lying on the ground as if he had simply stepped out of them. This was not the result, result of the grave robbers, as the burial clothes would have been too valuable to leave behind. Instead, it was a sign that Jesus had risen from the dead and had overcome death itself. The resurrection of Jesus is the cornerstone of the Christian faith. It is what sets us apart from other religions and beliefs. It is what gives us hope in the face of suffering and death. And as the Apostle Paul wrote in his first letter to the Corinthians, and if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain, and your faith is in vain. In vain. We could add to this that our being here would be in vain if Jesus Christ didn't rise from the dead. The resurrection of Jesus is also a sign of God's love for us. It is a demonstration of God's power 
to overcome even death itself. It is a sign that no matter what we, what we may face in our lives, we can be confident that God is always with us and that he will never abandon us. It is for us a reminder that after Good Friday, there is a Sunday of Resurrection. No matter how bad things become for us, no matter where we go to hide ourselves when we are overwhelmed, even if we lose faith for a time, Jesus will come to be with us. The resurrection of Jesus teaches us that we must learn to believe in the sun even if it is not shining, knowing that it will shine again. It teaches us that oftentimes we have to first believe in order that we might see. It teaches us that the true faith does not ask for a sign. It teaches us that it is not the end of the story, that the end of the story is what counts. That is why we rejoice and we are glad even if we are going through difficult times, through betrayal, unjust discrimination, lies, misinterpretations, even when the enemy seems to be winning the battle in our lives. But we know that Christ has triumphed and we know that the truth has overcome falsehood, deceit, and lies. As I mentioned, the reality of the resurrection is the central fact of the Christian faith. The most important feast of the Christian calendar because it is the resurrection of Jesus that gives meaning to everything else that we believe. It is more important even than Christmas. In the resurrection of Jesus, one thing is certain, that if Jesus had not risen from the dead and didn't appear to his disciples, we would never have heard of him. Nothing else could have changed sad and despairing men and women into people radiant with joy and courage. Dear brothers and sisters, as we celebrate Easter today, let us remember the significance of the empty tomb. Let us remember that Jesus has overcome death and has given us a gift of eternal life. Let us remember that no matter what challenges we may face in this life, God is always with us and he will never abandon us. Let us also remember that we have a responsibility to share this message of hope and salvation with others. Just as Mary Magdalene ran to tell the disciples about the empty tomb, we must be willing also to share the good news of Jesus' resurrection with those around us. In the Gospel of Matthew, in the end of that, that Gospel, Jesus commands his disciples to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. 
And this command is not only for his disciples, for the disciples of Jesus. It is for all of us who follow him today. We are called to be witnesses to the resurrection, to share the good news of salvation with others, and to disciple those who come to faith in Jesus. Dear brothers and sisters, as we reflect on the empty tomb this Easter Sunday, let us ask ourselves, are we truly witnesses to the resurrection? Are we sharing the good news of Jesus' victory over sin and death with those around us? Are we living our lives in a way that reflects the hope and joy that comes from knowing Jesus? And let us remember that the resurrection of Jesus is not only an event that happened in the past. It is a reality that continues to shape our lives today. It is a source of hope and strength for, for us as we face the challenges of this world. It is a reminder for us that no matter what happens in this life, we can be confident in the love and power of God. Let us therefore go forth from this Easter Sunday with a renewed sense of purpose and mission. Let us be witnesses to the resurrection, sharing the good news of salvation with all those around us. And let us live our lives in a way that reflects the hope and joy that comes from knowing Jesus. May the power and love of the risen Savior, Jesus Christ, be with us always. Amen. Amen. Happy Easter to all. Now let us stand, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God. Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, most substantial with the Father, through whom all things are made, for us man for our salvation, He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will not no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and his Son. Who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one, holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one of these for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The resurrection of the Lord fills us with the sincere desire to live a new life characterized by honesty, sincerity, purity, dedication, and love. Let us ask the Lord that this may become a reality for all as we pray. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let the community of believers be their witness to Christ's resurrection through its example of a continuous conversion from sin. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. That the Holy Father, our Bishop, and all our spiritual leaders may enjoy the consolation and peace that flow from Christ's resurrection. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. 
graciously hear us. That those who feel disheartened by the situations of violence, oppression, and suffering may find in the resurrection the courage they need to continue their quest for a better society. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. That all of us may receive the Easter blessing of a profound renewal of our moral values, socio-economic and political institutions. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray in silence for our personal intentions. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord God, may the splendor of your Son's resurrection always illumine our lives, and may our thoughts, words, and actions bear witness to the new life you have given us. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice and amends for the grace and glory of his name, for our good and all of us holy Exultant with Paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your Church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to love you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jewful, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all. We pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching we dare to say. So 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. The Lamp of God. God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am and I don't say the word, my soul shall be Body of Christ, 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 Body of Christ. Blood of Christ, 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 Oh 
Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Alleluia, Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia. Once again, happy Easter to all. Thank you.